Fault tolerance is one of the biggest selling points for using Elixir. In this two-part video we're going to build a fault tolerant package delivery system that is focused on performance and is obsessed with not losing any packages. In part one the focus will be on fault recovery and we'll talk about performance in part two. Elixir's Gen Server and Supervisor modules provide fault tolerance capabilities when it comes to restarting crashed processes. If Gen Server seems like a new concept for you, I made a few videos covering how it works, so it would probably be good to check those out first. Now, the warehouse application we will build will always be able to receive packages. It will monitor package delivery and will receive notifications about successes and crashes. And above all, it will not lose any packages. This is what the application will look like. There will be the main warehouse application module and the main application supervisor. It will supervise the receiver module that will be responsible for receiving all the packages and assigning deliverators to deliver them all. The deliverator module will be a gen server but it won't be supervised. Instead, it will be monitored by the receiver module, which will be responsible for all delivery assignments. The idea here is that the receiver will start a deliverator process, hand off some packages to it, and once the deliverator is done, it will shut itself down. There will also be a package module that will be a struct with a few useful functions. It won't be a gen server though. So in order to accomplish all that, we'll be using some functions from the process module like the exit and the monitor functions. We'll be using the kernel send function, which is just a basic non-gen server way to send a message to any process. In order to catch a generic message from a gen server process, we'll need to use the handle info callback. Again, if the handle info callback does not sound familiar, please check out the gen server basics video. Otherwise, Let's get started. Let's create a warehouse application and set up the basics. First we'll define the main warehouse module as the application. Every Elixir application has to have a start function, which in our case will start the main application supervisor. We'll have to provide the main application module name to the mix file. This specifies which module will be responsible for starting the whole application. We'll need to actually create the supervisor module, which will start the receiver. The receiver will be a gen server module and we'll only have one of those for the whole application so we could just identify it by the module name. We don't need to worry about its process ID. The receiver module will hold state, which will consist of package assignments. Now let's confirm we can start the application by running iex-s mix which will start our app and get us into the console. There is a neat system command for checking out state of any process and that is get state where you can provide the process ID or in this case the module name. I am just doing this to confirm that everything wired up properly and started correctly. You can see that it was because we get our map we defined as the initial receiver state. Let's define the package module next. This will be a struct with ID and contents keys. Let's define a new function that we'll pass the contents to. Contents key just refers to whatever this package will contain. After compiling, we can try this out and confirm that it works. It will be good to have something more unique than the number one for an ID, so we'll have a private function to generate that. I don't want to go into too many details about it, but it will generate a good looking 10 character string that will be unique enough for our purposes. For real things, please stick to the UUID library. After recompiling again, we can run the new function a few times just to see what kind of packages we'll get. Next we'll add a random function where we'll provide a list of possible contents, call enum.random on it and pass the selected contents into the new function. 
So now instead of having to come up with a new package name every time, we could just call warehouse package random and get something that we could use for testing. It would also be nice to be able to generate a batch of packages, which we can do by using a stream repeatedly function, which will lazily call package.random n number of times. So the number of packages you pass in will simply be calling package random that number of times. So to confirm that it works, when we call package random batch zero, we should get an empty list and random batch 10 should give us 10 unique packages. So that pretty much does it for our warehouse package module, which is mostly used for its struct, but we also included a few helper functions to help us with further testing. So now we'll add the star of the show, which will be our deliverator module. We'll just add some boilerplate here. Of course, this will be a gen server. And notice that this is not using start link. This will just use start. So the supervision won't be the standard Elixir supervisor supervision. Rather, we'll be monitoring this from another module. Now, of course, the main function of a deliverator is going to be to deliver packages, which it will do asynchronously. The idea here is that it will call deliver function recursively delivering one package from a batch at a time. Now we'll just test it by seeing which package is getting delivered and then calling deliver on the remaining packages. Once all the packages have been processed and the list is empty, the deliverator process will exit. So to confirm that it works, we'll need a random batch of packages. We'll start the deliverator process and pass the packages to deliverator deliver packages. And you can see that it works. And the process should now be dead, which we can confirm with process.alive function. In addition to saying we're delivering something, it's important to actually simulate a delivery. We'll assume a delivery takes some time, anywhere up to three seconds. Now, the whole point of this is to demonstrate some fault recovery technique. So in addition to making a delivery, we also need to simulate a potential crash. Now, let's say we don't want to crash randomly, but we're still a novice deliverer and let's say we want to crash 40% of the time. How do we do that? Once we have a random number from one to 100, what we can do is then check if that number is greater than, in this case, let's say 60, and if that's the case, we'll cause a crash. Now, this is going to be a bit more fun. We'll start our deliverator and generate some packages. And we'll start the delivery process. As you can see, when it's ticking down, as soon as the crash factor goes over 60, we're going to crash. There's probably an anger man joke in there. So now that we have our unreliable deliverator, we need a way to monitor and recover crashed packages. So we'll use the receiver for that. The receiver will be able to asynchronously receive a batch of packages, start a deliverator process, and assign those packages for delivery. So we'll add an alias method to this and try it out. But you already know what's going to happen. We're going to create a batch of packages, pass them on to the receiver, the deliverator will pick them up, and as soon as we get over crash factor 60, it will crash. So now we need to find a way to recover those packages. To do that, we need to track package assignments for each deliverator. Every time we receive a batch of packages, we need to assign each package to the deliverator process ID so we can keep track of it. The assignments will be a list of two element tuples with the first element being the package and the second element the deliverator process ID. We'll update the state with the new assignments and just so it's less confusing, we'll call the assignments from the new batch new and 
concatenate them with the existing assignments in a separate step. Let's quickly confirm that the packages are getting assigned by running system get state on the warehouse receiver. You'll see the assignment tuples with each package being assigned a deliverator process ID. Now when we run this again, you can see that now the assignment tuples have an additional deliverator process ID there. So in order to make this useful, something needs to change about the assignments, whether the deliverator crashes or successfully delivers a package. Let's start with the easier one first. Let's build a package delivery notification. Now, this will be an asynchronous method that will receive a package and actually needs to be called from a deliverator after a successful delivery was made, meaning it hasn't crashed. Because we're using a kernel send method to call this, we need to change this handle cast to handle info. Notice how this is just a callback method. There's not a method inside of this module that actually calls it. Now let's just run through what's happening here step by step. The receiver module will get a batch of packages, start a deliverator process, and call deliverator deliver packages. On the deliverator side, we'll call deliver packages, which we'll call deliver, and in turn for every package we'll call make delivery and send notification to the receiver if it hasn't crashed. And I just want to confirm that this notification is being received. When we run receive packages, you can see that that notification is right there. So now that we've confirmed the notification is getting through, we can filter out this package and remove it from assignments. If we want to be a little bit more efficient, we can actually skip using list that first and actually treat it as a list itself and just subtract it from assignments in the state. We can verify that packages are getting removed from assignments by generating some packages, sending them to the receiver, and waiting for it to crash. When you run system get state, you can see that there are only two assignments left and eight were delivered successfully. So it looks like it worked. Now on to more interesting things, the recovery of crashed packages. We'll start by monitoring the deliverator. Monitoring a process means receiving a message whenever it goes down. In addition to the message, there is a reason. The reason could be normal, meaning expected, or something else, in which case we want to take an action. Now we'll receive the down message through the handle info callback. The down message will have the deliverator process ID and the reason as the last element in the tuple. So in this case we're matching the normal reason so we don't want to do anything because the deliverator completed its mission successfully. But when we match another reason we do want to do something. Let's start with a message and see if we're actually getting to this callback first. When we run receive packages, once it terminates, you can see that there's our message, with the reason being that runtime error. So each package is assigned to a deliverator process ID, so we can use that to filter out our failed packages. To filter, we'll just need the deliverator ID and the assigned packages. We'll use the enum filter function, but there's a much neater way to do this, which we'll talk about in the next part. But all we'll do here is just compare the deliverator ID to the assigned deliverator and grab those tuples. We'll just need a list of packages though, not the tuples, so we'll map over that and grab a list of failed packages, with the package just being the first element in the tuple. We'll also need to subtract the failed assignments and reassign the remaining assignments to the state. So now that we have a list of failed packages, all we have to do is take that list 
and pass it to the Receive Packages function, which will then assign a new deliverer to it and attempt this process all over again. So there we have it, a fault tolerant delivery system. Let's try it out. Let's generate a batch of 20 packages and pass them on to the warehouse receive method. And let's see it in action. So after quite a few failures, it will eventually come to a stop. And when we check the state of the receiver, we can see that a list of assignments is empty, which means every package was delivered, even though it was done by a few different deliverators. So resiliency is all well and good, but we have a performance inconsistency here. In theory, the batch of packages could be any size, so it could take forever to deliver it all because our batch will be assigned to just one deliverator. We can handle that by having a method to chunk a batch and then reassign a chunk of a consistent size to the receive packages function. Let's try it out with a batch of 100. In theory, our performance should be consistent. Let's call the receive and chunk method and see what happens. After it's all done, we can check the state. We can see that the list of assignments is empty, which means every package was successfully delivered. So what if our batch size is increased to 10,000 packages? What's going to happen to our performance then? So if our chunk size is 10, that means we'll at least have 1,000 processes running, not considering the failures. This will work great if we have a machine that has infinite cores. However, if we want consistent performance, this is probably not the way to go. If that was the case, we could just decrease the batch size to 5 and get twice the performance out of it. But that's just not how things work. Since the goal of this tutorial was fault tolerance, I think we're there. And performance consistency is something I'll leave for part 2. We've covered a lot of concepts in this video, and some of them, like process monitoring, probably deserve their own. So if that's something that would be useful, please let me know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this part one, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for part two.